study today. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the showers of blessing that fell upon us early this morning. We like to ask for the Holy Spirit to descend upon us, to give us spiritual eyes, to look at things from your perspective. So today, we want to know how. We want to apply what we have learned today in our lives so that we can be in tune with you in the way you look at things so that we, have ex we will experience joy. Oh, Father, help us and teach us how to transfer this biblical perspective and worldview to others. So bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's topic is one of my favorite. In the eyes of the Lord, the biblical view. Okay, Sister Helen, could you read our memory text for us? The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Yeah. They say uh, if, you, if you keep a secret, nobody knows. If you live secret lives, nobody knows, but the Lord knows, right? A worldview is the way we interpret and understand the world around us. As you know, in this modern age, the worldview is actually shifting. Shifting towards more and more uh, godless. We are living in a godless society. A lot of people are having this secular view. So our worldview affects the way we act, treat others, as well as our decisions. The biblical worldview is based on God's existence and that he is a personal God who interacts with his creation. Whereas the secular worldview, they don't believe in the existence of God and the world actually evolved around them and therefore there is no purpose. The purpose is therefore uh, based on majority thinking. So God's existence is very important. This worldview can be seen in our creation, in the Bible teaching, 
through the plan of redemption and the law of God. So we can see all these eyes of God, spiritual eyes from these five perspectives. <clears throat> okay, Claire, could you read this for us in Psalm 51, 53 verse 1? Okay, um, I the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have done abominable equity. There is none who does good. Psalms 53. One. Actually, that one is not I, and that one is number one, uh, verse one. Huh? Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. The fool say in his heart, there is no God. Actually, from our perspective, it is really foolish to say there's no God because God's existence uh, is so evident. Okay? Uh, you must understand two worldviews. Uh, what are the worldviews? Let's discuss. Eh? Number one is the atheistic worldview. Atheistic means no God. Okay? The universe and everything in it just exists. Okay? And there is no gods or spiritual supernatural entities. Life has no purpose, no meaning. It's only subsistence. So you can see, eh? it's so ridiculous that the whole universe just exists through a Big Bang Theory. And you can see the Earth spinning 24 hours rotation. If it's just a matter of chance, eh? how could this just exist? It cannot be. And then they say there's no gods. What about those people who are possessed by demons? During Taipusam, there are some people who pray and they are under trance. What about miracles? Okay. So if life has no meaning, then we are just like animals. Okay. Animals also based on instinct. So for us, if we based on instinct, what's going to happen to us? We're going to have no restraint, isn't it? We just do what we like and do what we feel like. So it's a very dangerous uh, view. That's why Jesus said you are the light of the world. If the whole world is living the atheistic view, uh, the whole world will be in darkness. So you are the light of the world and there is no morality. The whole world will have no morals and everybody do what they think is right. And that is exactly what uh, during the time of Moses, God is very afraid. Everybody do what is right in their own eyes. But as the theistic viewer, the universe and everything in it were created by God. And God exists and cares for His creation. We were created with a purpose to live with God forever. Now, if you know that God is always with you, you will be able to keep your mind, your actions, and your works in check. Okay? That's why in the internet, you can see a lot of people write all those things uh, because they hide behind anonymity and say all sorts of things that get them into trouble. But now, because of laws, you cannot anyhow say anything. It will get you into trouble. Last time, people can say all sorts of uh, irresponsible views because they feel that nobody is looking. Now, can you imagine if nobody is looking, nobody knows what you are doing, your carnal instinct will come. So we know that God is actually constantly with us, watching over us. There is a purpose in life. So the Bible explains that God is a personal God who loves us and interacts with his creation. And God is real. He's alive. Okay? He is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. But he also cares for each one of us and longs for our company. That's why with this theistic worldview, every moment of life we live for God, whether it is joy or sadness, whether it is life or death, 
God is very close to us. Okay, let's discuss uh, why in the end is the biblical worldview, the theistic worldview, simply so much more logical and rational than the atheistic rival. So in other words, the question is, if you were to study objectively, why with the worldview that God exists is so much better, so much logical and rational compared to a worldview where God don't exist? Can anyone give some suggestion? Why is it better to believe in God than you don't believe in God? Okay, this is a very important discussion because this will enable us to share with our unbelieving friends. Okay? Remember when you witness to your friends uh, who don't believe in God, your, your views are very important. How are you able to put across that God is real? Rather than no God. Anyone? Please unmute and uh, share. The world runs in orderly manner. You know, if it comes by Big Bang or nobody created it, nobody designed it, then it will be disorder. Ah, so, that's a very good point. Yeah? Disorder, right? A good example will be uh, in America, if there is a riot, no police will be... If police were to go on strike, there will be disorder. So can you imagine if God doesn't care about us, the whole universe will be this, in disorder, right? A very good point. Any other points? I ever counsel one couple, she is an Adventist, the husband is not. So they were about to get married. So I encouraged the husband to uh, consider embracing Christianity as the same as his wife. He doesn't see the need. Then I proposed to him, uh, when you have children, uh, what happens if your children decide to become a homosexual what would be what would you say you allow him what is holding him back because there, if there is no god everybody will be their own god isn't it they will make their own choices as you can see many societies in the world now they are abandoning God. All those European countries, they are actually very Christian oriented. You look at Europe, you look at America, they are actually very Christian oriented. But now you can see they are leaving God. So when they leave God, a lot of things will happen. They start to say, okay, we do away with capital punishment, no death. Okay. The Bible actually endorsed capital punishment as a consequence of serious crime. And many of them abandoned the original purpose of man and woman. And why? Because of carnal nature, perverted nature, you see. And they don't see that the devil is trying to draw them away from God. They don't see it because they don't believe in devil also. That's why more and more nations are celebrating Halloween, right? To them, uh, these are a fun thing, but to us, we know it's a battle of between spiritual uh, forces. So, the biblical worldview uh, will make us make right decisions, you see. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, as you can see. 
Okay, I want, uh, can I ask uh, Victor to read John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came in the beginning to Him. And apart from Him, nothing came into being that was come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. Yeah. So God, Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God, right? And all things came into being through Him. Apart from Him, nothing. So actually, the last verse says, In Him was life. And life was the light of man. This light is very important. Unfortunately, once you depart from God, that's where the light switch is switch off. We begin to die. That's why a lot of people are actually dying. Okay, they are living a life, a meaningless life. Okay, Irene, are you able to read Isaiah 45 verse 2? Uh, is it I who made the earth and created mankind on it? My own hands stretch out the heavens. I marshaled the starry host. Okay. The Bible considers two facts settled since its very first verse. God exists. In fact, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. It is taken for granted that God exists. There is no argument. He created the universe. And that is the first truth that all of us, when we were to witness to people, okay, God exists. That's it. The rest of the biblical truths are based on these two principles. The law, redemption and resurrection. Okay, So the Bible teaching uh, makes no sense if we deny God created the world in six days. The Bible cannot be true only in some sections. That's why God has given us a legacy on the seven day week cycle. You notice that if even the secular world, they have the seven days. Why don't they divide, divide the month into six? Because 30 days are more logical. Why don't they divide into five? Okay, still divisible. Why divide by seven? So odd. Because God has given us the heritage of the weekly cycle. You see? And that is the proof that God exists. You, if you talk to people who are secular, you ask them, uh, one day is, how, how you form one day? Complete turning of the earth, is it? One year? Complete evolution of the earth around the sun. One month? Complete evolution of the uh, moon around the earth. Week? They do not know how to explain. Week can only be from the creation week. No other reason. So if you were to discuss with people, God has actually given us plenty of evidence. And one of the evidence is the Sabbath day. Okay? The, the seven day work week. Seven day week cycle. And uh, many people choose to accept evolution which has no evidence at all okay because they have one worldview the worldview is god doesn't exist and with this worldview they try their best to prove the theory of evolution even the smartest men can fall into this trap of denying the existence of god that's why the bible say uh, if you Say there is no God, you are a fool. Right? It's a very strong word. Okay, Melissa, could you read Job 12, 7 to 10? Are you able to unmute, uh, Melissa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm muted. Okay. Yeah. But ask the animals 
and they will teach you the birds of the air and they will tell you ask the plants of the earth and they will teach you and the fish of the sea will declare to you who among these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this in his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. Okay. Very powerful metaphors. Huh? Beautiful, yeah? Yeah. You say, ask the animals. Of course, not literal. Huh? Uh, uh, the birds of the air, they will tell you. Animals teach you, birds tell you, plants teach you, fish of the sea declare to you. Okay. Who among these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? You know, it's a very powerful thing. Even the animals, uh, the created things, uh, know that they come from God. Why? Because God already put in them the instinct to live. In fact, human being is the only created being uh, that a newborn uh, cannot take care of himself or herself. You need the care of the mother and the father. In fact, many animals, they can live by themselves. Okay, as babies. They have the instinct to live, to walk. You look at the, the calf of a deer or a goat. They will know where to find milk. Right? Birds, after some time, they develop the ability to fly. And they know where to navigate. Okay, during winter, they know where to migrate. And God built in them a super uh, natural instinct to obey the directions of God. As you can see in the story of Noah's flood, God just tell the animals, okay, two by two or seven by seven, just go in. They obey. No need to preach to them. <laughs> but for the human being who are, who have deviated from God because of sin. We need to be preached on. We need to be convinced. We need to make that choice. So actually, the animals are better well off, are, are more well off than us. Okay. So we need salvation, not the animals. And then a uh, Sabbath day. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And this is the commandment. Unfortunately, a lot of people uh, forget. That's why the fourth commandment is the only commandment that say, remember. When you tell people, remember, I mean, sorry, you are afraid that they will forget, right? So God asked us to spend one seventh of our lives every week to remember the six day creation. Something he asked for, no other teaching. Okay. What should that tell us about how foundational and important this doctrine is to the Christian worldview? Now you know why the devil wants to attack this commandment. In fact, the whole Christendom uh, keep God's commandments except the Sabbath. Because that is very foundational of the existence of God. And if you don't keep that Sabbath, you will start to devise human-oriented adjustment to God's teaching. As you can see, why the Reformation is necessary. Because of paganism that creep into the church. Okay, more and more churches are, are compromising the teachings of God. It's actually based on this teaching, on the fourth commandment that they have deviated. Anyone has any other views? So we should not downplay eh, the importance of the Sabbath. In fact, the Sabbath is the most important. If you don't have the Sabbath, you don't have other teachings. Okay. Feel free to add something uh, if you want to uh, discuss. Yes, Sister Helen. I was always under the impression 
that God created the world for us. Because when he made the other animals, he, the Bible says he, had cre he made creatures of the sea, the sky, and he had plants. But all these were made and, <clears throat> and he didn't even name them. But on the sixth day, when he made us, he says, let us make men in our image. We were called men right from the start because it is in, the, in his image. Then he asked Adam to name the animals. So we are special. The other animals were made for our enjoyment. The, uh, the trees, the plants, everything was made before men. Yeah. So that when we, we came into the world, we enjoyed the world. So All I right. thought we, we are always special. Yeah, right. Uh. I think the point is, uh, if men were to be created first, uh, then it would be very meaningless, you know, just like coming to a country, you are asked to work. There are no facilities, no homes, no job, you know, but God is very special. Uh. God allow us to come to a perfect world where everything is provided. Okay. It shows that God cares for us and God loves us. And you mentioned that we are created in God's image. That means uh, now we have actually deviated from the image. Oh, it's rest. Now your microphone is able to come on. You want to say something? It's rest. Very echoey. <laughs> Okay, Corina, could you read the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14? That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Yeah, this is talking about Bible teaching. The way we interpret our environment depends on our worldview. Okay, what is your worldview? If you think that God exists, then the things that you see will automatically uh, associated with God. Okay, God is in every part of our environment. For example, the rainbow. To the eighties, uh, it's just a beautiful physical phenomenon. They say that because the sun shine on the water droplets, that's why you have seven colors. Now, for us, uh, it is not, right? It is more than that. It's not just that. It is actually a reminder of God's promise that He will not destroy the earth with a flood again. This is a very powerful reminder. So, for parents, uh, as well as grandparents, whenever you have a chance to look at the rainbow, it's your opportunity to share with them about the Noah's flood and Noah's flood came about as a result of men uh, building a tower of Babel men oh sorry not that sorry men, as a result of men uh, disobeying God okay deviating from God tower of Babel came after the flood right the biblical worldview includes a series of doctrines that teach us to what how to live. Okay, the Ten Commandments. How to make moral decisions. How to treat our neighbor. How to interpret the world around us and what to expect from the future. So actually, true education uh, should involve, evolve around these five areas. Therefore, Christian education must be based on the Bible. But unfortunately, you can see in our modern education, it only teaches us knowledge that has nothing to do with telling us how to live, how to spend our money, how to make moral decisions, how to treat our neighbor, how to love, okay? how to interpret the world around us and what to expect in the future. So, 
the smartest person will have no idea that Jesus is coming soon. The smartest person will regard whatever they have. They think that they are the master of everything. So when disaster strike, they realize that only God can help them. So it is very important to raise our children, our grandchildren with this understanding on how to live. That's why in this environment, we are living in a godless environment where most of the time, our entertainment, our television, our schools, we are bombarded by godless teachings. So important for us, uh, under our influence, uh, we should take this opportunity to let our children know that God really exists. So from young, you let them know. Okay, uh, Sister Helen, can you read this again? Uh, or, or can you read again, rather? How great the condescension of God and His compassion to His erring creatures in thus placing the beautiful rainbow in the cloud as a token of His covenant with men. It was God's purpose that as the children of after generation, generations should ask the meaning of the glorious arch which spans the heavens, their parents should repeat the story of the flood and tell them that the Most High had bended the bow and placed it in the clouds as an assurance that the waters should never again overflow the earth. Yeah. So it's a very important uh reminder that sometimes we forget when we see rainbows uh, we tell the story of the flood and then you can also relate to uh, modern local disaster do you know that in uh, Vietnam now uh, a lot of places are flooded many people lose their homes so when you watch news like this, it's an opportunity for you to say, you know, there are these localized flood. It also reminds us of the worldwide flood during the time of Noah. But God is not going to give us a worldwide flood, only localized flood. So this localized flood is an opportunity for us to tell them, to tell our children and the unbelievers that actually God has already promised there is no such thing as a worldwide flood. There won't be a worldwide flood in spite of the global warming. Global, you see, floods as well as fires is a result of man destroying the nature, polluting the world. But God won't allow a worldwide disaster or flood. And then it's an opportunity for you to also say, you know, Jesus is coming soon. He will not destroy the world with the flood. He's going to destroy the world with fire. And the California flood fire is an opportunity for us to also talk about uh, worldwide fire in the near future. You know, we, not too long ago, we prayed for Mrs. Ng's daughter, Sherilyn. Uh, second time uh, they are experiencing abandoning their homes because of the fire but thank God uh, the fire did not consume their home the second time first time it was devastated you know, it was fully burned and then we were also told uh, uh, the fire almost engulfed Ellen White's home right Ellen White's home was still preserved and a lot of people say God or the angels was preserving it. So we have many opportunities to talk about God. We can see miracles around us even though we are bombarded by a secular society. Okay, Joey, welcome in. Since you are there, could you read for us this text? Romans 3 verse 24. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, oui. Okay, maybe he cannot, huh? Okay. Uh, Irene, could you read for us? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans yes. 3, 24. God didn't just discard creation when humans sin. He created a redeeming plan. The creator would die to save his creatures. Okay, we are called to share this everlasting gospel with others. And the gospel is closely related to creation. Isn't it? Actually, the redemption is actually a recreation of humanity. God's plan of redemption was conceived even before creation. Now, this is a very it's a mystery. If you know that what you create uh, will fall into sin. Would you create anyway? Most of us will not. Just like if you know ahead of time, if you embark in a project that will fail, will you do it? No, right? But God already have a solution before he even start the project. Okay, it includes the death and resurrection of Jesus and the blessed hope of his coming. All these are planned right here. Corina, could you read for us Roman uh, Revelation 14 show? Here is the patient of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. There is no absolute mor morality yeah, for the atheistic worldview. Therefore, moral decisions are relative. So it makes sense for different countries to have different laws about moral behavior of the citizens. Now, I want you to know, eh, I think I discussed that before. Let's go into detail. Eh. For the last few years, eh, the homosexual lobbies eh, have been trying to convince Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long to repeal the law on 377A to criminalize homosexual behavior or homosexual acts. Okay, criminal. That means uh, if you have sex with the same gender, it is a crime. But unfortunately, most of the countries, including America, Europe, India, and it was not too long, Taiwan, they already removed this law. They say that it is archaic. archaic. Our beloved Tommy Cole, the ambassador at large, he already said, why are you keeping this archaic law? Now, my question to all of you is, where does this law come from? A Singapore law criminalizing homosexual acts. Can we discuss? Singapore law come from where? We emulate which country? Can anyone tell me? British. British. Yeah, okay, Victor. Very good. British, right? British yes. law uh, come from where? Now, Victor, maybe you can continue. I don't talk that British come from where? British law, British laws. By who? Exactly. Oh, my. You must understand, uh, British oh. originally was a Catholic nation. Then later on, uh, they become Anglican. So all through the centuries, uh, those European countries influenced by the Catholic Church, they the, the civil laws are drafted based on the Bible, based on the law of Moses, you see. So the capital punishment that Singapore adopted from the British law, the criminalizing of uh, 
homosexuals come from the British law, and the British law come from the Bible. You see? Now, they say that since Singapore is a secular society, by right, you should amend the law or do away with the law. Now you can see eh, how dangerous it is eh, when the worldview eh, is starting to shift and become amoral. That means it become relative. Relative means what? If more and more people eh, clamor for the laws to be changed, then the laws will eventually change. And the laws of God, you know, is immutable, cannot be changed. Okay, the Bible introduced an absolute, unchangeable, eternal, and obligatory moral law that applies to all human beings. The penalty for breaking is death. And this makes the plan of redemption necessary. But unfortunately, a lot of people are decriminalizing homosexuality. And even murder, some of them say you there is no death penalty. So now you know in Europe and in US, uh, the prisons are actually full of people on death rows because more and more people are against the death penalty. So the law is based on loving and respecting God and our neighbor. It's the moral code that shows us what is good before God's eyes. So unfortunately, they become their own God. They set up their own laws. Okay, this week's lessons look at some of the key points of a Christian worldview. The existence of God, the creation, the Bible, the plan of redemption, and the law of God. What other important elements should be included in any complete formulation of a Christian worldview? In other words, huh, if you are a teacher in a Christian school, if you are a Christian parent, not if you are, you are a Christian parent, what should you include in your teaching of your children or your grandchildren that help them to have a complete understanding of the Christian worldview? What should you include besides uh, the existence, creation, Bible, plan of redemption, and the law of God? Besides that, what do you think? Can we open for discussion? Marriage. Ah. Uh, okay. Can you elaborate, uh, Victor? I mean, God, uh, God instituted the marriage, you know, and to have a complete family. But the world is changing. Eh? A lot of family being picked down. You know, why sad to see that in you know, a divorce case or this. Why is it so? A lot of, uh, I mean, we put, I mean, like you say that like God is, it's not part of the family, you know. So, the world is changing. I mean, that's not talking about the LBGD. I think recently, this pop also and singing the same thing, you know. So, the world is changing, you know. The world is looking at him as a god, you know. If you say yes, also be a yes. No? So, this is another challenge, you know. That marriage now being break down. Divorce case has gone up very high now, you know. Is it because people are married without God as part of their lives? Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, that is a very important point. When God is not in your marriage, so what happened? Uh, you become very self-centered, isn't it? And if you know a happy marriage, uh, it's not based on self-centeredness. It's actually based on accepting each other's weakness and building each other up. But most marriages... Uh, uh, actually seeing how we can benefit from this relationship, what I can gain. So many of the relationships today are actually transactional. Okay, what do I get? So if you have this kind of mindset, it is an atheistic mindset. Okay, more and more celebrities, they marry based on looks, they vary based on money, based on popularity, okay? so that they will feel good in the public, but they don't see the importance of marriage. 
and a lot of people think that a hey, marriage is the only way that I can apply a flat. You have one celebrity in Singapore, an actor says, actually, there's no need to get married. Marriage is just a piece of paper. More and more people think like that. And uh, they get married because, so that their children can uh, apply to go to school. So they can apply a flat. Okay. So the laws are changing to fit into their people's uh, worldview. And that is very scary. Without God in their lives, we are living in a society uh, where it is a godless society. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, we are living in perilous times, you know, where people have a form of godliness but denying its power. Uh, okay, so Victor thinks that marriage should be um, I think it's very good. Because a lot of people get married without premarital counseling. It's just like uh, driving a car without taking lessons. Uh, accidents are very high as a result. I think there are more marital accidents uh, than there are car accidents. Why? Because everybody must go through theory and practical and then a test before you get your driving license. Uh. But your marriage license, everybody will just apply without going to school, without going for learning. That's why a lot of couples are actually suffering, you know. They do not know how to get along. Okay, so I think Victor mentioned a very important point. Marriage should be part of our learning experience to develop a Christian worldview. What other worldviews? What other formulation? About how about relationship with others? Yes. Okay. Relationship with others. How to get along, right? Uh, yeah. Conflict management. Okay. How to develop your uh, relational skills, how communication skills. Others. In fact, re relationship is actually a very broad topic. how we speak, how we carry across ourselves to others. Actually, this one is a continuing process. Actually, when you read the Bible, the best teacher is still Jesus, isn't it? Jesus is our example on how we should treat others, how we should live. It includes uh, forgiveness, it includes showing love, it includes how to uh, encourage. Also, how can we have compassion of those in need and those who need help? Correct. Yeah. So it's like I say, it's very broad. Uh, so, so many things to cover when it comes to relationships. So many aspects. So many areas of life skills. You know. Okay, that's a good point. Any others? About health. Ah, I'm just waiting for that. Yeah, health is very important. Uh, like how, what to eat. Okay. What is good for our body. Uh, today, everybody, almost not like, almost everyone. I'm talking about secular mindset. They eat because it tastes nice. They don't eat because of health. They don't eat for strength. They're actually eating for pleasure. No, no. You don't see this in animal world. You know? Animal world, they eat according to what is suitable for them. That's why you never see a cow huh, eating a carcass. You never see an elephant huh, eating a deer. Right? Because they know what to eat. Huh? For us, we, we have lost our ability 
to eat the right kind of food that is to keep us healthy, to be free from disease. So we have to go back to uh, this teaching uh, on health. Okay? And many of us, including myself, we don't sleep when it's time to sleep. Many of us sleep late. So we don't have enough uh, energy. As a result, many people are taking supplements. You see animals taking supplements? They don't, right? They eat natural food and they get all the nutrients there. So actually, a lot of things to be taught in this uh, formulation of Christian worldview. Any others? We still got time. Actually, there's some more, you know. You just uh, think about it. Okay, anyone? Sister Helen? I was thinking, of, <clears throat> Jesus came here to show us how to keep the Ten Commandments, the law of God. And we have been told that you don't change even one little or one, one letter. But for men, we always can change the law. So what is a law? A law should be half in stone, it shouldn't be changed. But we are all with them changing. So man's law is really very frivolous. But God's law is forever. Yeah, uh, this brings us to a point where God sometimes use uh, government leaders uh, to enact civil laws. And we as citizens of God, we need to be good citizens of a country as well. We need to obey the law of the land. For example, when the government tells us, don't congregate in a restaurant uh, more than five, we should obey this law. Okay? When we, wear, we are told to wear a mask wherever we go, we should obey this law. We should not be found among the disobedience. Uh, uh, like the restaurants who got fine, people who got fine, you know, because they disobey. Because if you disobey the law of the land, you can also disobey God's law. And we should not be critical of the government because the Romans chapter 13 is very clear. Uh, if we are critical of the government, they are actually ministers of God put there. So we must teach our children uh, to be good citizens also. Okay. By default now, we are quite rebellious, isn't it? We must also share about the consequences of disobedience. Sometimes as children growing up, they make mistakes. Even adults also make mistakes. We must also learn to forgive. Okay. Uh, the law of the land has no forgiveness you break the law you suffer the consequences you pay the fine you go to jail but in god's law if you repent there is forgiveness okay and uh, jesus uh, blood uh, cleanses us from all sin you also clean cleanse us of a guilty conscience okay i have one for you to consider what about being a good steward this is something that we should also learn. You know, uh, the world uh, thinks that they, are, they manage their money based on how much they have. Their success is how much they have and how powerful they are in position. We need to teach our children uh, that money is not ours only. It's actually belong to God. We are supposed to return tithes as an acknowledgement of God, as a giver of all good things. A stewardship of our wealth has to be instilled. Otherwise, the next generation of 
uh, believers, uh, they don't return tithe. They don't, don't give offerings to God. And we need also to teach them, uh, don't use tithe as a weapon to, uh, to manipulate our church leaders. Uh, church leaders should not be affected by the powerful, rich, the church members. Okay. Whatever the who, whatever or whoever the leaders are and what they whatever they do, our returning of tithe has nothing to do with uh, Christian leaders. We need to teach that. Otherwise, we have very bad example of Christians who we hope we held their tithe because they are not happy with the church leaders. Okay, they take it on to God's church. You look at the example of Malachi, what happened? You know, the curse of God came upon his people, his believers, as a result of this uh, selfish withholding of the tithe. Even in this COVID-19, the greatest test of our faith is actually our finances. In spite of our difficulty in uh, managing our finance, some of them don't have money. But when you do have money from the government, are you tithing it? You see? So we need to teach that. Otherwise, this will, will be lost. You see? God gave us seven days in a week. One week, be, one day belong to them, to Him. God gave us 100%, 10% belong to Him. So we need to teach the stewardship, the right Christian stewardship. Okay, anyone else? How far do you agree with what I said so far? Very quiet. All right. Can we ask Melissa to read this before we end? Huh? This uh, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5. Okay. Um, can I add a bit first? I think you have a lot of good points and I think it's uh, good to uh, think about whether teaching our children or grandchildren systematically plan for all what they have said. You know, then at least uh, we know what is imparted because most of the time we just vicariously they pick it up. So I think systematically do it is good. Your idea is good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. In God's word alone, we will uh, we find an authentic account of creation. In the word of God, the name, the mind finds subject for the deepest thought the loftiest aspiration. Here we behold the majesty of heaven as he humbled himself to become our substitute and surety to cope single-handed with the powers of darkness and to gain the victory in our behalf. Our reverent contemplation of complete contemplation of such themes as this cannot fail to soften purity and ennoble the heart and at the same time to inspire the mind with new strength and vigor yeah so the bible is actually the ultimate textbook regardless of all what we should learn the bible should be the standard for all kinds of teachings okay without the bible we will be directionless so with the bible in our hearts and minds because uh, in hebrews uh, as well as jeremiah god said that the day will come uh, he will write the laws on our hearts and on our minds okay no longer we will be directionless i hope when God call us, we would just say, yes, Lord, what would you want me to do? Okay. So with this in mind, whether good or bad, whether we suffer through life or death, when we look 
things from God's perspective, everything will fall into place. There will be questions that can never be answered. Okay, there will be mysteries in life we can never unravel. But we must understand God is in control. Once we put on these spiritual eyes, we can see ultimately. Now we see in a blur vision. One day it will be face to face. Everything will be clear. Let's end with a word of prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that this lesson has enabled us to look at our environment, to look at our country, and to look at ourselves from your perspective. And we know that the Bible is the standard of our living, of our learning, and our behavior. I pray that as faithful Christian stewards, we will do our utmost best to put into practice what we have learned, to be a model example to our neighbors, our unbelieving friends, and our children, so that they will see Jesus in us. Help us to ultimately follow Jesus' example, to restore the lost image that you have put in us. And hopefully one day when Jesus comes, he will look at us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter down into the joy of the Lord. May this promise be with each one of us as we listen and apply what we learn today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Chen. Yeah. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye, Joby. Bye.